Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel. Today I want to demonstrate how to create two types of Tunisian roll stitches in Tunisian crochet. This is the swatch that we'll be making with the two types of Tunisian roll stitches. And you can see that it has no curl. This is a wool with a high twist and the swatch has no curl at all, which is why curl stitches are great at creating flat fabrics in Tunisian crochet and you can use them successfully to, for example, add a border to projects that curl or you can use it in combination with the Tunisian simple stitch to create either the honeycomb stitch for which I have a separate video on the channel or a ribbing which I will show you at the end of this video. If you want to crochet along with me, pick up some yarn and a hook that's one to two millimeters bigger than what is usually recommended for that yarn. And let's learn how to make the Tunisian pearl stitch. To make pearl stitches, first we need a foundation. So we create a slip knot by bringing the tail of the yarn to the front over a loop and then insert the fingers through the loop and pull up a loop which you can put on the hook. Then we can start with a chain. I will make 10. This will qualify as 9 purl stitches and 1 last stitch. We can start with the purl stitches right from the foundation chain. So if you want to do that, you bring the yarn to the front, insert the hook through the back bump of the first chain, or you can skip the first one if you want, but then you have to add one more chain to keep the stitch count correct. And then we yarn over and then pick up the loop. I really don't recommend making purl stitches in the foundation chain because there's no point in doing this. We can make a regular foundation chain and then when we add the purl stitches on the next row we will modify the row below, so the foundation row. This is why I will make a simple foundation by picking up loops in the back bumps of the chains. So you just insert the hook and pick up a loop. I have a separate video that shows you how to start four different types of foundations in Tunisian crochet and you can use either one of them. At the end there should be 11 loops on the hook and then we chain one yarn over both or two to the beginning of the row to return. As you can see the first row looks like simple stitches but when we begin making the purl stitches we will modify these stitches so they will not look the same anymore. There are two methods of making purl stitches and I will demonstrate them one by one. Both types require you to bring the yarn forward in front of the hook. Then you insert the hook through the vertical bar of the stitch below and now you have two options. The first option is to bring the yarn to the back and then yarn over and pull through. You have to make sure this stitch is quite tight so you don't leave it very loose. Again, we bring the yarn to the front, insert the hook, then bring the yarn around the hook and then pick up a loop. We repeat this to the end of the row. You can get quite fast at it after a while, just make sure that you pull back a little bit on the tensioning finger so that these loops have all the same length. If you don't pull back, you might end up with very loose stitches and you don't want that. I will demonstrate now what happens when you have loose stitches. And you will see that when we do the return pass. So as you can see here I have the tight stitches and here are the loose ones. I have one more stitch to make. And then last stitch as always insert the hook behind the two vertical bars at the end. Yarn over pick up a loop. You could bring the yarn to the front and make a purl stitch in the last stitch as well. But I've noticed that it doesn't make 
much of a functional difference, but it looks worse. So I choose to make the regular last stitch. We chain one and then yarn over, pull through two to the beginning of the row to return. Now, if you look at the stitches, you will notice these at the beginning have a very nice tension, and these at the end are loose and floppy. So, you don't really want this. The loose one, you want the tight and neat stitches. Let's make one more row with this method with correct tension so I can show you how to work into these stitches. If you look at each stitch, you will see that it has these two horizontal bumps in front and then a vertical bump. This is one purl stitch. It also has a vertical loop in the back. So, to make another row of purl stitches, we do the same as we did before, except now we insert the hook behind this front vertical bar. Yarn over and pull up a loop, bring the yarn to the front, insert the hook, pick up a loop. At the end of the row, insert the hook behind the two vertical bars, pick up a loop. As you can see now, all the stitches have the same length and the same tension. We chain one yarn over both the two to the beginning of the row to return. I will show you now the other method of creating purl stitches. It starts the same, we bring the yarn to the front, we insert the hook, but instead of bringing the yarn like this around and then yarning over, we grab the yarn with the hook and we pull through. Again, bring the yarn to the front, insert the hook, Behind the vertical bar of the stitch below, grab the yarn and pull through. We repeat this to the end of the row. And as you can see, I'm having trouble with doing the purl stitches in this method because I'm not used to it and I don't like it especially. It creates really tight stitches and it takes work to do right. As you can see, the tension is very tight on my hook. At the end of the row, insert the hook behind the last two vertical bars and pick up a loop and then yarn over pull through two to the beginning of the row to return. If you look at the stitches, they look very similar with the ones below, but there is a slight difference because these stitches are twisted. So if you look at the vertical bars with the other method, that we used to create the purl stitches, the vertical bar in front was coming on this side. Now the vertical bar in the front is on the other side, towards the beginning of the row. This is due to the way we create these stitches. When picking up the yarn like this, we yarn under. So this is not the regular way of making chains, but it works. And it creates these twisted purl stitches. If you choose to use either one of these two methods to create your project, just make sure you choose the same way of doing the purl stitches on every row.
unless you want to use this change in the disposition of the vertical bars of the purl stitches. I haven't tried to make honeycomb stitch with the second method, but if you try, let me know what it looks like I would like to see. On the back of the work, we have these horizontal bumps. This is actually the front of the reverse stitch, which we will learn in a separate video. As you can see, this fabric doesn't curl because the purl stitch creates a pretty even distribution of loops on the front and on the back of the work, so you don't have to worry about curling when using just purl stitches. To bind off, you have different options. You could try the regular Tunisian simple stitch bind off. Just insert the hook behind the vertical bar of the stitch below and slip stitch. But this will create a row of Tunisian simple stitches at the top. If you don't want that, you can have a pearl cast off. So you bring the yarn to the front, insert the hook behind the vertical bar of the stitch below. And then do the regular pearl stitch, but instead of leaving it on the hook, you slip it. This continues the pattern in the fabric if you only use pearl stitches. I make it easier by just drawing through two when I draw up the loop for the purl stitch. This way it's much faster to bind off a fabric made with purl stitches. At the end of the row, insert the hook behind the two vertical bars and then draw up a loop and slip it off the hook. As you can see, the simple stitches have a tendency to curl even in the bind off, and the purl stitches have no such thing. One great use for purl stitches is making a ribbing on the side of a project. So if you have a project that needs ribbing, such as a hat or a pair of mittens or a sweater, you can create a ribbing on the side of the work by making one row of simple stitches, one row of purls, one row of simple stitches, one row of purls. And that way you create an accordion-like fabric, which has a little bit of elasticity and looks like ribbing in the final project. On the back, of course, it looks exactly the same for both types of rows, but on the front it's nice and flat and helps tame the curl of any panel of simple stitch that you may have or other kind of curling stitches in Tunisian crochet. This is a ribbing I like to use on most of my projects because it looks pretty and is easy to make. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you're interested in more stitches and patterns, make sure you subscribe to my emails and to the channel if you want to know when I publish the next videos in this series, vlogs and pattern videos. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!